speakers for today. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, our theme today is you are unique the way that you are. And um, <clears throat> being unique means that being the only one of its kind unlike anything else. So uh, that's coming out of Psalms 139 and verse 13. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And if I can get the, the next slide. And this is our <clears throat> theme scripture, verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, for I know that full well. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for life. We thank you for health, strength, and understanding. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to stand and to share your word with your people. Father, we ask that you open the ears of the hearers so that they may hear this word and that the word may take root. God, in your word it says that your word will go forth and accomplish its assignment, and it shall not return to you void. So we thank you, God, for your word landing on good ground, taking root, and bearing much fruit. Father, we yield to you. We ask that we decrease, God, and that you increase. Have your way, God, in this place, God, and in the hearts of our youth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're just going to reiterate the theme for today, uh, which is uh, Psalms 139, verse 14. And it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. So we want to just take a moment to provide some background on the one who's speaking in this verse. So David is the son of Jesse, and he's also the second king of ancient Israel. Now, before David became king, he was, uh, before David was anointed as king, he took care of his family's sheep. And just to provide a little bit more background on David, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? Since I have rejected him as king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. So before David received the anointing as king, God had already chosen him. He had already selected him. So it's important for us to know that we don't wait for a man to tell us who we are. God has already told us who we are Amen. when he knit us together in our mother's womb. And in verse 2 and 3, God instructed Samuel to take a heifer. Next slide, please. In verses 2 and 3, God instructed Samuel to take a heifer, which is a young cow, to offer as a sacrifice. And God told Samuel to invite Jesse to the sacrifice. God said, I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one that I indicate. In verses 6 and 7, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. Eliab was David's older brother. And so when Samuel saw Eliab, Eliab was big and strong and handsome. I, I read, I read. <laughs> I haven't seen him personally, but I read that. Um, and so Samuel thought, surely the Lord's anointing stand here before the Lord. But Samuel said, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at his heart, the innermost part. And, and that's just one of the points that I want to drive home uh, to the young people and to the older people as well. We have to be more concerned about what's going on on the inside. What do our heart look like? Are we kind to people? Are we considerate? Do we love on people? We need to take most of the focus off how we look or how somebody else looks and focus on what's going on on the inside because that's really what matters. Amen. Now, Jesse had seven of his sons passed by Samuel, but Samuel said to the Lord, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen these. So Samuel asked, are these all the sons that you have? Then Jesse replied, they're still the youngest. I want you guys to know that even David's father had not put David in a race. His father had not considered him. But I also want you to know that that don't matter, right? What matter is what God say about you. 
right? Because remember, you guys are unique just the way that you are. God created each of us for a particular purpose, for a particular reason, and he's given us everything that we need in order to fulfill the purpose that he has on our life. So Samuel said, sin for him, we will not sit down until you rise. I want you guys to know that we don't have to be concerned about what others have or what others are doing. Because what God has for you, it is for you. And realize that God will call for you to come and get your stuff. But we have to make sure that we are in a position that we're hearing from God when he's calling us to come and get our stuff. So when David arrived, the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. I want you guys to know that God saw David's heart. So know when David's own father did not consider David worthy as choosing, because he was looking at David's age and David's position in the family, God chose David because God knew what he put on the inside of David. God put a warrior on the inside of David. God put a love and a reverence for the things of God on the inside of David. God put a king on the inside of David. I want to encourage you guys to take an inventory of yourself, right? What gifts, skills, and abilities have God placed on the inside of you? Take an inventory and think about what gifts, skills, capabilities have God placed on the inside of you in order to fulfill the purpose that he has on your life. Slide five, please. In verse 13, it says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Now David went on to defeat Goliath. He was promoted to high ranks in Saul's army before ultimately becoming king. We give you so much background on David because it's important to emphasize that David recognized that his success was directly related to God, who is his, yours, and our creator. So I also want you guys to to make a mental note of this. David went from the back of the line to the front of the line. David went to the back of the line to the front of the line because he was God's choice versus people's choice. So we have to take our emphasis off what people are doing, right? We should only be concerned about what people are doing if we can pour something into them, right? And we got to stay focused on what God is doing and what he will have us to do so that we can go and fulfill our purpose. Amen. We good. We good, y'all. So... In order to know and experience God in this way, you must read the manual. The manual is the Bible. Um, The manual is created to provide an explanation as to why something is created and how to operate the creation at its fullest potential. So with that being said, uh, your cell phones, pretty much everybody got a cell phone. When everybody gets a new cell phone, a lot of times we'll just open it up and we'll just start playing with it. But uh, a lot of times we figure out how how to work it. But if we open the book and we read the manual, then we won't have to waste time fumbling around and be like, man, I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to get to this app. But if you read the manual, it'll show you how to get there the right way the first time. And that's what the Bible is. The Bible is the manual for our lives. A lot of times we want to try to figure this stuff out on our own without reading the Bible. And the Bible is always going to point you in the right direction. And so a lot of times we try to figure this thing out. And then after we bump our head a few times, then we'll be like, oh, man, what does God have to say about it? Now we want to read our Bible or whatever, and we got some bumps and bruises. So to avoid the bumps and bruises, just read your Bible. What does God have to say about each and every situation in your life? Um, And a lot of times, you know, it's hard, you know what I'm saying, because everybody, it ain't the popular thing to do. But popular don't always mean right. And and right's going to be right till, till God comes back. And so with that being said, if you just do what God tell you to do, you'll be fine with that. You know, you'll be all right. You know, read the manual. Just read the manual. <laughs> Amen. All right, so also, um, so, you know, our whole thing is uh, being unique. So uh, I'm going to kind of flip it around a little bit about being unique. So in Genesis uh, chapter 1, <clears throat> we found out God created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> and then we go down to the, Verse 24, we find out that on the sixth day, God 
said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, cattle, creeping things, and beasts on the earth according to their kinds. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> go this route with it. God created some unique animals, right? And with these animals, he gave them things to do in their own way, their own environment. So um, I'm about to throw some slides up here, y'all, of some animals. So don't, don't, don't uh, get all freaked out on me. But uh, I got some information about each one. It's probably like four or five of them, maybe six. Um, so if you go ahead and put the next slide up, please. Yeah, yeah. That's the reaction I wanted to get. Awesome. All right, so right now, because, you know, it's you, it's you Sunday. That's a blobfish. <laughs> it lives in the deep waters of the uh, seas of Australia and Tasmania. Um, so the thing I want to point out about this, which I'm going to bring it back, is that's how the fish look when it's out of its environment. It don't look too good. It look like a normal fish when it's deep under water. Yes, ma'am. And so what I'm, I'm going to bring that back to, that's what y'all look like when y'all ain't following God. <laughs> so y'all need to follow, you know what I'm saying? Y'all need to get back. <laughs> y'all need to get back to God right. so you don't look like that. <laughs> So, <laughs> so just so y'all know, that was like voted the world's ugliest animal in 2013. I kind of agree with it. But um, that, uh, that particular fish can live up to be 130 years old. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah. yeah, so this is a naked mole rat, a.k.a. a, a sand puppy. And this is located in Eastern Africa or whatever. So what I want y'all to know about this is, as ugly as this thing looks, it, uh, it can't get cancer. Now, ain't that something? You think something like that could get cancer, but it can't. Its skin is very sensitive, but for whatever reason, God made it where it can't even get cancer. But to look at it, you think, man, that thing got all kind of diseases. So tying it back in, everything ain't what it looked like. So don't judge a book by its cover. You know what I'm saying? Just because they, you know, you may look better than them, you don't know what they got. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So God bless them. You know what I mean? And don't be quick to judge people how their appearance is. Amen. Because they may be healthier than you. And you don't even know. Amen. Amen. All right, next slide, please. All right, so this is a okape. This is like AKA a zebra giraffe. Giraffe, I'm sorry. But with that being said, it's not even related to a zebra. But you would think it would be because it's got the stripes on its legs. But it's actually a giraffe or one of the giraffes. And um, what I want to say about this is everything also, again, ain't what it looked like. You may put that in the zebra category, but it's actually a giraffe. And so you just can't judge a book by its cover. Just because you see somebody dressed a certain way, um, you know what I'm saying, you want to put them in a category just because they ain't got a suit on. You know, they, they, you know what I'm saying, they may have, a, you know what I'm saying, jeans and a ball cap, and you may look at them a certain way, and you may put them in a certain category. Don't do that. Don't be so quick to judge. You know, you judge by what's coming out of somebody's heart, Amen. you know, instead of by what their outward appearance is. Amen. And so, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep you all up today. Um, elephant seal. So... The thing about this is it's found off the coast of the Pacific. Uh, the thing about this is it has no external ears, but yet it can hear. And that's what's, that's what's shocking to me. So, you know, you're looking at it and you're like, man, so how can it hear? It don't have any ears. Well, God, that's how God made it. You know, and also with that is um, the male can weigh 10 times more than the female, which is crazy to me. I don't see that, but... Um, <laughs> But one of the unique things about this is it can stay underwater. So this is considered um, an aquatic mammal. So with that being said, it still has to come up for air. But it can stay down up underwater longer than any other aquatic mammal on Earth. Wow. So that's, that's like really amazing to me. And that's the uniqueness of that particular animal. Amen. Next slide, please. Amen. I got a couple more, y'all, a couple more. <laughs> Pink fairy armadillo. Right, so the thing about this is, if you see those bands of them, it's like 24 bands, and it turns pink. And it's pink because up under that, that band or that um, shell is some blood vessels. It's a network of blood vessels. 
And so when those blood vessels, depending on that uh, armadillo's temperature, it changes. And so it can go from real pink to real pale. And that's according to the environment that it's in. And so I just want y'all to you know that God has made some unique animals. Yeah. And, and, and just because he made these animals don't mean if he put that much into an animal and we're rulers over animals, how much did he put into you guys? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind. Amen. Um, next slide, please. Purple, flo uh, purple frog. Uh, next slide, please. This is a monkey, and I'm just going through and showing you some different animals that God created for this earth. And each one's in its own particular environment. Uh, next slide, please. And that's a shoe bill. Now, I actually pulled up a video of this thing, and when it starts clucking, it sounds like a machine gun. I thought somebody had messed with the audio on the YouTube video. <laughs> but you hear this thing walking around, it sounds like a machine gun. It's like one of the tallest birds on earth. It's standing like four and a half feet tall. And uh, so just know that God created this, man. Like, if y'all young people understand, hey, look, God put all of this into an animal, how much more did he put into y'all? And that's what I'm trying to drive through with these different animals. I got one more of an animal, and that's uh, next slide, and that's the snub-nosed monkey. Now, God created this monkey to live in the mountains, you know, and they, they dwell upon like 600 other people. Now, we can't get along with our brothers and sisters, and they can live with 600 other family members and peace and harmony. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if that's not crazy, I mean, I'm just saying it's unique. It's unique. Yeah. And uh, just going back, um, God made all these animals unique in their own special way, yeah. just like he made the youth, our young people, our old people, our middle-aged folks. All of us are made uniquely. And I think he made all of these animals unique so he can reach other unique people. God uses people to get to other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You might not get it from uh, Pastor Anderson or Minister Anderson. You might not get it from uh, Minister Van. You may get it from me. You may get it from uh, Tamika. You may get it from whoever. But God uses everybody to reach everybody. Amen. So, you know, Amen. just because of what I'm saying, you might not understand what I'm saying. That's cool. But somebody do. You know what I'm saying? So don't let God, you know what I'm saying, don't let the devil prevent you from getting up and saying what you got to say whether it's in the classroom or on your job Amen. or in, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, while you're traveling with family members. If God put it on your heart to speak and say something to that particular individual, then you need to be bold enough Amen. to say it. Amen. Because if he put it on your heart to say it, then it's for that person. Amen. So y'all just keep that in mind. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, on in Genesis um, verse 26, Reggie just talked to us about um, on the sixth day, God created the animals of the earth. In verse 26, uh, we find out that after creating the living creatures, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and over the wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male, female, he created them. So with that... <laughs> That scripture just tells us that we, each of us, each of us have been created in God's image. And we know that God is the creator of the entire world, of the entire universe. So that same type of power we have in us because God is not a man that he shall lie. And if his words say Amen. we were created in God's image, we were created in God's image. Amen. And we have the same power that God has. Amen. Now, when we lose that power, it's when we stop going to God, right, for guidance. When we stop going to God, for God to reveal to us who we are and how to use that power. When we go to people and we see people, listen, we are living in a world where people are lost. People Amen. are lost. And so if we're not going to God for guidance on how to live our life, we'll be lost just like them. Amen. So it is very important that we keep our focus on God so that we can fulfill the purpose that God has created us to fulfill. Time is short, right? You don't know when God going to call you home. Right. And Amen. you don't want to waste time not fulfilling that great thing that God put on the inside of you. Amen. God put greatness on the inside of you. Amen. Greatness God has put on the inside of you. Don't waste that worrying about what somebody else is doing. Pray for them people. Amen. When you see these people on social media doing things that does not represent God, we need to pray for them. We don't need to try to imitate that. Amen. They lost. Amen. 
their laws. Amen. You are God's masterpiece. You were created especially for a particular purpose. God took his time when he created each of you. He made sure you had a particular hair texture. He designed your finger and palm prints uniquely to you. God chose your eye color and your height. God strategically assigned your personalities, your skills, and your abilities all to work together in the fulfillment of your God-given purpose. Don't waste time wanting what God gave someone else. Amen. They have what they need in order to fulfill their purpose, should they choose to tap into it. And you have what you need in order to fulfill your purpose, should you choose to tap into it. Amen. Instead of wasting time, invest time by going to God in prayer, asking God to reveal to you who you are and what you have been created to do. Make sure, and this is the important part, because the information is there. You guys are here at church. You guys are getting the word. You have parents who are coming to church. They're giving you the word. You have the word. It's important that we align our actions with the word. Amen. That's where we see um, success. That's where we see the power of God moving in our lives, when we are obedient and we act on what God has instructed us to do. Yeah. Only then. Not so make sure... Stores. Not right. just here as doers. So make sure your actions align with who God says you are. Thank God for choosing you. Thank God for using you as a major contributor in his master plan. And remember, you are unique just the way that you are, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. All right. Amen. And so we want you guys just to join us and stand, and we want you to repeat after us. Because we know hearing is believing, and we receive it when we say it out of our mouths. And so we're going to start at slide 15. And if you guys will just repeat after us. I, I am, am who, who God, God says, says I, I am. am. I am who God says I am. I am light. I am light. I am victorious. I am victorious. I am not alone. I am not alone. I am chosen. I am chosen. I am accepted. I am accepted. I am special to God. I am special to God. I am called by God. I am called by God. It's a personal thing. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, you are. To God be the glory. Yep, that's it. Give God praise. You can let that say that. Amen. We thank God for these two ministers coming up. One got the title of a deacon, and the other one is, uh, is open with our youth department. And we just thank God they are ministers of the gospel. And do you know God called all of us to ministry? Yes. Amen. Amen. Every born-again believer is called to ministry. Oh, it, 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 it amazed me the first time I realized that. Pastor was talk, my pastor was telling us about how over in the book of Acts, whenever the church was persecuted, the Bible said that they went, when they were persecuted, they went everywhere preaching the gospel. Yeah. The believers, not the apostles, but the believers yeah. went everywhere preaching the gospel. So that's our job, is to tell somebody else about the goodness of God and to remind these young people today that they are unique. Yeah. Amen, amen. They are one of a kind. I heard somebody say that there's, there's nobody have a thumb. You can look at your thumb, and nobody got a thumb like you. Amen. You are thumb body. <laughs> Amen. So we need to realize who we are in God. And, and don't, don't let nobody uh, hold you back because you're young. I wrote down some people. I thought about it, how uh, God called Samuel when Samuel was young. God called Joseph. When he was young, I already talked about David. When he was young, all these are teenagers I'm talking about when God called them. Jeremiah, the prophet, he was young, and, and, and Jeremiah would tell God about, I'm young. God said, don't let, don't, don't let that bother you. Say, you do what I tell you to do. And then Daniel was young, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, all those were teenagers that God used. And in the New Testament, God used Timothy. And I thank the Lord Paul told Timothy that let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of the believer. 
And just like they were saying, you got to be able to stand for yourself and don't try to blend in with the crowd. Amen. I like that motivation of thing. Because see, you got to realize it takes something to stand up by yourself sometimes. Amen. Amen. And when you're standing for right, sometimes you'll be the only one standing. Yeah. But you'll be surprised at how many folk are watching you stand. Amen. They want to stand, but they don't have the boldness to stand. But when they see you standing, somebody will join you. Amen. Amen. So stand up for what's right and do what's right. And one scripture over in Ecclesiastes, it says, uh, remember the Lord in the days of your youth before the trouble comes. See, it's a lot of folks when we get old and we're already in all kind of problems and situations, then we want to cry out to the Lord. But you can avoid a lot of what you saw, bumps in the roads and things like that. If you if you do God, if you serve God when you're young, you can miss out on a lot of mistakes and not have to live with a lot of regret. So I encourage you to make a choice right now. We had, I think it was seven young people last week to give their life to the Lord in children's church. Now that's amazing. And you can't say because they're children, they don't know what they're doing. Because they understand, they're being taught, and they understand. And so we thank the Lord for them. We thank the Lord for our youth department. Amen, Amen. doing such a good job. Amen, and Sister Mel put in a, a, some hard work on that, and she had, uh, I see Sister Regina, and I saw Sister Ann, and I don't know who all else worked. I thank the Lord for God putting people, Amaya. I thank God, and I saw, um, what's the baby name that did all the dance and everything? Her mama was right here. Queen Asia? Yeah, yeah. I, I thank the Lord. Uh, didn't, they, didn't they do a good job? Amen. amen, amen. So we thank God for them so very much. And we do thank God for Deacon Reggie and Sister Tamika. And for some of y'all may not know it, Sister Tamika lost a sister earlier this week. And uh, just be in prayer for that family. I think she was, what, about 40 years old? 45. About 45 years old in an accident. So, you know, be in prayer for that family and, um, and that God will continue to strengthen it. But she had the strength to come up here and do this today and, and did such a fantastic amen. job. Amen, amen, amen. So, so we thank God for them so very, very, very much. Yeah, Sister May. <laughs> Amen. She did a wonderful job. This is her first time presiding, I believe. In. <laughs> this is her first time. But you know, God put some unique people in this ministry. Amen. And you know, as a pastor, it's my job to help pull out the potential. I didn't choose her for that, but I've chosen her for many other things before. And so when God put that gift in you, it's for the ministry. It's not just for you. It's for the ministry. And so we do thank God for them so very much. Uh, First Lady, do you have anything you want to contribute to this service today? She got a chance to sit down and watch the entire service. She thought she wasn't going to have to do nothing. So come on up and just say hello. <laughs> oh, um, well, I'm just glad to be here. My, my, my birthday uh, month is, uh, is winding down. You know, you missed out. I'm celebrating all the way since the 30th. And I just have 31 days. Of, oh, the 31st. But we do thank God for all of you and the youth. Everyone did an outstanding job on today. Thank God. We thank God for all our visitors that we have here in the house of God. Uh, we just uh, encourage you to be in prayer for one another. Always pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Amen. Just don't look at them and assume that everything's okay. But always pray. Amen. Amen. Before we close, now we just got back from um, from Brunswick. We came straight from the hotel to church. So we've been celebrating. Now, I noticed, you know, when you're, um, when you're going into the hotel and you got this, what this thing, the rack, the thing you put your clothes on, and they got a, a, a place where you hang stuff. When we were going, we had about two pieces on the, on the thing to hang up. Coming back, the thing was about full. That's called somebody went shopping. And that, <laughs> hey Amen. We came back with almost a right full of clothes and all kinds. Nothing for me. She bought, <laughs> 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 she bought 
she bought some for those grandchildren now, their, their grandbabies and stuff like that. She didn't even think about me, no, a, a pair of socks or nothing. But that's okay. <laughs> it's her time. It's her time. Amen. All right. We thank y'all so very much. Y'all are the most wonderful people that I know. And I'll tell anybody, I am so glad to pastor Evergreen Church here in Bristol, Georgia. You all are some wonderful people God has put in this ministry. And I thank God for all of you so very, very much. Now, before we close, we're going to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, you look like that first fish. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what, not on the outside, but on the inside, you're ugly. Amen. Because it's Jesus Christ that beautifies us on the inside. Yes, yes. And when he beautifies us on the inside, then we can do something about the outside. Amen. So if you have not made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior in your life, we're going to do what they used to call in the Baptist church, open up the doors of the church. If you will, please stand. And we're going to give you the opportunity to become a part of the family of God. The Bible said we will confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. He will save us. That word save means deliver. He delivered us from the penalty of sin, which is death, physical, spiritual death, and also he saves us from the power of sin. The things that we could not do on our own, now we can do it through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ sets you free. It's beautiful. It's wonderful to be free. People that are bound by drugs, bound by alcohol, bound by ungodly lifestyles, Jesus Christ can set you free. And that's what he does when he comes into your heart. Then you need to go like Deacon Reggie was saying, then you need to read the Bible and find out what belongs to you and find out how to operate in this power that he has given us. So all you have to do is make a choice. And if you make a choice to receive him as Lord and Savior in your life, he won't cast you out. It don't matter what you have done. It don't matter how many times you have done it. If you come to him and say, Lord, forgive me, he will forgive you. Lord, receive me. Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And he won't cast you out because Jesus Christ already died and paid the price for every sin that you have committed. One prayer can change your destiny. One prayer can change your life. I Sometimes I use the example, I used to use a lot about, I ask some people, I say, what's the difference between a, a, a groom and a husband? What's the difference between a bride and a wife. When you come up to, uh, to, to be married, you're the groom and you are the bride. But the moment you say two words, I do, change you from a groom to a husband. It changed you from a bride to a wife. The moment you came to Jesus Christ, he changed you from an old man, an old sinner to a new creation. He takes you out of the family of Satan and put you in the family of God. Is Don't underestimate that prayer because it's important. God honors yes, it. Right now, you have not made that choice. I ask you if you will just bow your heads with me and you can close your eyes and God will hear you and say, Father God, I come to you today. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died he on the cross, and on the third day, he arose again from the dead. He died for my sins. He arose for my justification. And right now, I claim him as my Lord and as my Savior. And according to your word, my sins are forgiven. I am saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you sincerely prayed that prayer, God answered that prayer. But you need to acknowledge it. You need to let somebody know I made that. Don't try to be a secret disciple. Let somebody know I made Jesus Christ my Lord and my Savior. And you need to find a church home, a place where you can grow. People that believe like you believe, that can help you become strong in the Lord. See, even when you get saved, you're not strong. When you get saved, you're a baby. You have to learn to be strong. That's why we need each other. 
This is your opportunity right now. And if you don't have a, if you made that prayer, if you confess that prayer, pray that prayer, we're going to invite you to come down and, uh, and we want to pray with you. If you need a church home, if you're already saved, if you need a church home, we invite you to become a part of Evergreen Church. If you are, uh, if you have another, anything else that you need to have somebody pray with you about, whether it's something personal, whether it's sickness, no matter whatever it is, if you will come, we'll join our faith with your faith, and we'll pray. And you don't have to leave like you came. God loves you unconditionally. So no matter what you're going through, you don't have to go through it by yourself. We will pray with you. We'll join our faith with your faith, believing God can make the difference. For those of you that are at home watching us on Facebook, we thank you for joining us. And we ask you to be strong in the Lord, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you for joining us. Take it to God in prayer.